Let me ask you a question. Do you find yourself getting anxious or worried about what's going on in your marriage? You might be thinking that, you know what? My marriage is not getting better. You're probably saying to yourself, can I forgive my husband or can I forgive my spouse for what they did to me? You know, can he stay faithful? Will he ever be faithful in our marriage? You are anxious and you are frustrated and you are paralyzed by anxiety. But what if I tell her that is not what God wants for you, wants for your life, and wants for your marriage? Well, I want to share with you how to stop worrying and trust God's plan for your marriage. And that's what's coming up next on Not Easily Broken. Let's have this conversation. <music> Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the channel. I am Doran. Thank you so much for being a part of what we do. Really appreciate you guys rocking and constantly keep supporting us. You know, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it tells us to be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Yes, and you can apply Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 to your marriage by focusing on three key areas. Number one, trust. We're going to talk about prayer, and we're going to talk about gratitude. That's that's a three-point that I want to make or demonstrate or talk about in this video here. And so let's look at them. The first one is trust, right? Trust in God, purpose, and plan for your marriage. You have to trust God in your marriage. You have to. You don't have a choice, my friend, because he's the author of marriage. The word of God says, be anxious for nothing, right? But listen, my friend, instead of allowing worries and anxiety to overwhelm you, to overcome you, you need to trust that God is in control of your marriage because he is. And I want you to hear what I'm saying, right? You see, whether you are facing challenges or just going through everyday stress in your life. Remember that you don't have to carry these burdens. You don't have to carry this pain alone. You don't have to take the weight and all the problems on your shoulders because God invites you to release your worries and place all of it on him. You have to have full confidence in God that he is going to work it out for you. He tells us to cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. In a season and in a time where people want to position themselves as the answer, no, they're not the answer. God is the answer. And that's why you need to put your faith and your trust in him and stop the worrying. Stop the worrying. Stop the complaining and look to God. Read your word, man. Study the scripture. Meditate on the word of God. Surrender your life to God. Surrender your marriage to God. And I'm telling you, I've been married for 30 years. 30 years of marriage. And I remember the third year in our marriage, I was frustrated. I was overwhelmed. I thought that my wife was supposed to make me happy. I thought that, you know, she was the glue to really making life fun and excited. And I, man, I figured out that, no, I, I can't trust another flawed human being with my life. I have to trust God. I cannot trust another flawed human being with my happiness. I have to trust God. I have to create that happiness within myself. I was not anxious anymore whether my marriage was going to succeed or whether it's going to fail. I put everything into the hand of God and I work on the things that I need to work on so that I can become the man and the husband that God wants me to be. And you need to do that too, my friend. Be anxious for nothing. Because if you trust the God that created you, if you trust God who is the author of marriage, if you trust him, then you're able to know that God will do it for you, my friend. So that's point number one. Point number two, pray about everything. Yes, the Bible tells us to pray about everything, right? Be anxious for nothing, that point one. And then with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. You have to make a habit of bringing God into everything that you do. 
I don't care whether it's something big or whether it is something small. You have to become so good at saying, God, I'm going to leave this into your hands. Pray to God. Put it before God in prayer. It is time to trust God more than you trust man. The Bible tells us to put not our trust and our faith or our confidence in a man. We, we have to learn to put it in the hand of God. We have to learn to say, you know what, God? You can fix this for me. You see, when something is troubling you or when you're going through hardships or going through a situation in your marriage, maybe your spouse is acting up or not doing what they're supposed to do, don't let it fester in your heart. Don't let anxiety and worry stressed you out. Instead, you need to turn to God for help. You need to look to the one who is able to help you. That's what you need to do. Instead of worrying about it, pray sincerely. Asking God for wisdom, asking God for knowledge, asking God for strength, asking God for a way to make things better. Your prayer will draw you closer to God, and it will also help you to deepen your faith and your trust in each other. When you pray to God and you say, God, I want you to take this problem. I want you to take this pain. I, I want to lay it at your feet. I'm going to put it into your hands. Yeah, God, I'm going to take this marriage, and I'm going to lay it at the cross. Some of you guys don't pray for your spouse. You don't pray for your husband. Do you know the struggle and the frustration and the challenges and the tests that he has to go through every day? The warfare that he's trying to fight, the battle that he's trying to overcome even in his mind? Do you pray for your wife? As a husband, do you, do you go to God and say, God, bless my wife, take care of her, protect her? You got to do that. We have become so, I don't know, we... We have this tendency to think that we can just do it on our own. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord thy God with all our heart. We must lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways, we must acknowledge him. And when you do, God will direct your path. There is a pathway to a better marriage. And it's going to go right through Christ Jesus. It's going to go through you surrendering your marriage to the Lord. I am sick and tired of people thinking that they are the answer. I am so sick and tired of flawed human being thinking that they can make your marriage better. They can help. But we're not talking about help here. We're talking about total marriage restoration. We're talking about transformation. We're talking about healing in your heart and in your mind and in your soul so that you can be better equipped to love and serve in your marriage. God is the author of marriage. The last time I checked, man is the one that messed it up. Man is the one that, you know, destroyed it. And so you have to trust God in order to make it better. And the third point that I want to make to you is that cultivate a heart of gratitude. The Bible tells us that with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you got to give thanks. Cultivate a heart of gratitude. You have to do it right? As you pray, don't forget to give thanks to God. Don't forget. You know, when you have gratitude, you shift your focus from what's wrong to what's right, from what's lacking to what you have. So you're saying, God, I know what's happening right now. Things are not looking good. You are worried. You lack the faith. You start to point fingers. No. You're going to say, God, in spite of all that I'm dealing with, I'm going to thank you. Thank God for his blessing. Thank him for a new day. Thank him that in spite of everything that is happening, I'm going to just trust you, God, more than I trust myself, more than I trust man. I'm going to put you at the center of this marriage, this relationship. You see, his blessing is true. God is true concern in his promises to you. He's true concern in his promises then. And he is true concerning his promise now. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. You can trust God even when you can't trace God in your life. You can trust God's word even when you can trace the hand of God working through and dealing with your situation. You got to have faith. 
The Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you want God to change the landscape and the direction of your life and your marriage, you have to have gratitude in everything. Give God thanks because if it is the will of God for your life. Now, this don't make no sense, right? That I'm going through marital problems and I'm supposed to give God thanks because he knows the outcome. He knows what's going to be the end. He knows the end from the beginning and he knows the beginning from the end. This gratitude of thanksgiving will bring peace into your marriage. That peace that passeth all understanding is going to give you that joy. Because you begin to realize that, God, I can't fix this problem, but I'm going to put it into your hands. I'm going to give this to you. Because if you don't do it and if you can't fix it, nobody else can. People can temporarily try to help you in your marriage. Yes, psychologists and your psychotherapists and your counselors and your mentors. Yeah, I've been to my share of counseling. But at the end of the day, they're not the answer. They don't have the total answer to your marital problems. Only God can. Only God does. And that's why you have to yield your will and your marriage to the Lord. And when you do, God is going to work through it for you. Right? The Bible tells us that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we ask or even think. Yeah, he's able to do it. And by applying these principles to your life, by applying this to your problems, applying this to the situation that you're going through, you will create a marriage that is resilient. You create a marriage that you're able to face the trials of life in the midst of uncertainty. You will find peace. You're going to find happiness. You find unity. You find strength because there is a reassurance or there is an assurance that God is guiding you. And he is leading you every step of the way. And my friend, that's what I want to share with you. You don't have to be anxious. Trust God. Believe in God. Take God at his word. Understand that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. This is the season of your life and your marriage when you need to start trusting in God, trusting in his word more than you trust man. We have become so um, I don't know. I, I consider it to be very disrespectful that we rather rely on the voice of man rather than the voice of God. We rather listen to the voice of men rather than listen to the voice of the word of God. And so when you do, my friend, it's going to change everything. Well, my friend, that's the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Those of you that are listening via um, our podcast. I really appreciate you guys' support, and so please like and share, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.